Hello and welcome to this new host of our video. My name's Alex and today we're going to have a look at a few things you can do to improve your Unify wireless deployment. So we're going to have a look at the first thing and we're going to make a new SSID on my controller. We're going to have the hostify as the SSID. We're going to have the password as just something random. This will not be used in production so it doesn't actually matter what it is. We're going to do all APs. And one of the top things to do is consider what frequency the SSID is going to be broadcasting on. So the difference between 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz is a higher frequency, so it'll propagate less. Uh, that means through objects and things, and it won't go as far as 2.4 gigahertz. So 2.4 gigahertz has been around for a much a much longer time. There is less frequency available, uh, and a lot of things like Bluetooth receivers, microwaves, and baby monitors, for example, use this spectrum. So if you can, have a quick look at what devices you've got on your network. Um, so if you've got quite new modern devices, um, like iPhones that are made in the last 10 years, they'll support 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So if you've got enough access points in the house to cover it, I would mainly uh, have 2.4 gigahertz turned off for the main SSID and only use it in situations where you have to use it. So for example, an IoT network and use 5 gigahertz um, in that case. The other thing you can do is if you are using 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, disable band steering. Band steering used to be quite important uh, back in the early days of Unify. It's actually not the, it's not the advisable to let the, the APs or the controller control what the client does. The Wi-Fi clients now are quite smart. They can work out what to do on their own. Um, so band steering might mess up a few things. That's that's one of the things you can do. The other thing you can do is look at the 82.11 DTIM period and the minimum data rate controls. I would leave these on auto. Again, it's messing with what uh, the controller is going to do to the devices. Um, let the devices sort themselves out. If you are running 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, what you can do with the APs, if you've got quite a few APs, you can have the 2.4 gigahertz on 20 megahertz. That's really the only one you should be running it on. Uh, don't leave the channels on auto. Uh, you can select and plan out. So the 2.4 gigahertz channels are 1, 6, and 11 in the US. In the UK here, we've also got channel 13, um, but it's just 1, 6, and 11 are the three that don't overlap. Transmit power for 2.4. If you've got enough access points in the house, leave this on low. And then the 5 gigahertz frequency. If you don't need the speed, don't run 80 megahertz. So 80 megahertz would go up to like eight, 900 megabits per second. If you've got a couple hundred megabits, you can get away with running 40 megahertz, and it's kinder to your neighbors, and also it will allow everything to run a bit more smoothly. Again, don't leave this on auto. Pick a, pick a channel um, that's applicable to you. And also, transmit power. I would run this on medium or high for 5 gigahertz. So with the transmit power on the access points, you can actually run into a few issues. So we've got a guy that I've linked down in the description below called Unify Wireless Best Practices. And there's a section here called Transmit Power, which I wrote. It says, Unify allows you to specify the transmit power. And basically, the, the problem is having the transmit power turned up way high can generate the near-far problem. And what that means is... so. The Unify access points have very large antennas, uh, and if they're broadcasting very loudly, and a phone is picking that 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 signal up, the phone themselves have a very small antenna, and you'll get basically the AP will be shouting at the client, and it can't hear properly. So it's beneficial to have that a bit of a medium and have a nice overlap for APs. Also, having weaker clients connected can actually cause more problems as they eat up more air time of the AP. That's how much, how many clients the device can serve at one time. And the very last thing we'll get to is the access point placement. So for mounting access points, like the Unify access points, best and the TP-Link ones, it's best to have them on the ceiling or the wall. Um, if they're just on the floor or behind something, it's not going to be a very good experience for the clients connected. Um, really, ideally, the Unify access points should be mounted on the ceiling uh, because they sort of propagate downwards. Um, and also make sure it's not too close to any electronics, uh, such as televisions or air conditioning. It can cause some problems. If you need more information, have a look at hostfile.com. We do Unify hosting, UISP hosting, and now TP-Link Armada hosting. If you need any help with Unify or TP-Link Armada, don't hesitate to contact our team at support at hostfile.com. You can do live chat, phone call, or email. We're also on Twitter at hostify underscore net. Thank you for watching this video. My name's Alex, and we'll see you again next time.